Nairobi, the capital city of Kenya, and we are the headquarters of more than 70% of organizations working in Kenya are located. Here, we meet a doctor and a philanthropist who offers his skills to help those in need regardless of the race, their nationality, or their religion. My name is Dr. Mesha Onwuzmiyaka. I'm a reconstructive and marketing researcher. I'm also the non-executive director of Help a Child Face Tomorrow. Help a Child Face Tomorrow is a non-governmental indigenous organization based in Nairobi, Kenya. An organization that deals with uh, uh, taking essential special services to those areas of need. The last what we did part was the last night. And we have no boundaries where we go to. We don't we go to places whether they are unsafe or unsafe because we know that there are many people who need our services in those areas. In December 2021, Help a Child Face Tomorrow embarked on a surgical mission to Kismayo, Jubaland, Somalia. In 2021, in December, we decided to take a team to Kismayo, Jubaland, Somalia for a surgical mission specifically for people with cleft liver cleft We had been requested that there are people there who are suffering and there are, there are even adults who are still walking around uh, with their clefts without uh, having a normal life in life. It was quite challenging, particularly organizing for a program. First of all, getting the team that would be able to accompany us to go to Jubaland, Somalia. You know, Somalia is known not for only good things, but for very bad things, particularly in the security, kidnapping, and many other things that are in place. At the moment, they have also suffered from very devastating uh, drought and this hunger. And there's also very high poverty levels. Organizing missions to places like Somalia is not easy. There is always the inbuilt fear of insecurity. It became challenging to convince people that, look, where we are going, when you are helping people, you will be safe. And all in all, we did manage to get a committed team of volunteers who agreed to go to Kismayu, Somalia. And who also agreed that they would be able to stay there for two weeks continuously. We started the channel at 5 a.m. on the morning of 30th of December 2021. The timing of the mission was during the festive season. However, the team found it more appealing and more reasonable to be helping people other than to be celebrating the festive season with their families. Bear in mind, it was only two days towards the new year and people sacrificed. They said that they would rather be where they are helping people rather than celebrating the new year coming in. We arrived in Chubalan, Somalia on the same day. The Friday is only one and a half hours. Uh, the difficulties were that while we had been cleared to have a uh, visa, uh, we paid for a visa from here, when we arrived in the Kismayo airport, the Chubalan government also told us that they wanted us to pay for a visa, which we had to do because it is, apparently the federal government doesn't cover all the areas that are supposed to be there. Also, the culture, that area demands that for the ladies, they have to wear clothes that will cover their head, their hair, and their things on. So, from the word go, it was quite exciting to see that. The hospital where they were received lacked skilled personnel, leave alone proper working surgical equipment, such as oxygen cylinders and scissor machines. The hospital was basically with nothing that would be able to do any major operations. We found out that in most cases when you are doing these major operations, we normally need oxygen. That's either piped or produced and put in cylinders. But they had only oxygen concentrators, which could not be able to run the anesthesia machines. They never have an anesthesia machine. And remember, this is a place where there are so many things coming in place. We had only one option, either to pack up and go back and not to help the people who want to see, or try to see how we can innovate ways and means of trying to, to, to help them out. The 
the place had insufficient equipment. Help a child face tomorrow, assisted by cleft kinder from Germany, purchased the equipment and did a total transformation to the place. The team did not stop just at treating the patients from their conditions that would have required them a lot of money. They also trained the locals on how to operate the purchased equipment. Give a man a fish and teach him how to fish. Help a child face tomorrow does not stop there. It also gives the required items for fishing and that is what differentiates this organization from other organizations. When we went, we found out that first of all, yes, in terms of facilities, there are facilities, but they are not sufficient to do the major surgery. That's why I say that we had one option, either pack and come back or see what we can do with it. And because we are taking most of the things that we require, we make us two safe surgeries, we actually had to do a total transformation. Help to teach the people that this is how we like to do the things in place. And they accepted and we did the work. But we also found out that the skilled manpower, they have very minimum skilled manpower. Most of the people that were working with us are not yet going through formal training. There are very few that have gone through formal training in the areas of nursing, in the areas of emergency, in the areas of theater, in the areas of the wars, in the areas of ICU. And this is why we felt that we were very useful to them because we were able to show them how to take care of the patient, how to monitor, how to examine, and how to do everything else. Number two, you know, in the COVID area, we found this an area where, for example, that people they did not yet care about COVID. And so we had to tell them, look, when you are with us, we this is what you are supposed to do in theater, and whatever is the case, which it became something that was very great. Now, I will say one thing that look, where we went and found a gloomy place, we found this was very difficult. By the time we were leaving. We were living in a place that is frightening. We are living in a place where at least we made a change. We are living in a place where we had good, good uh, appreciation from the first of all the patients and the general public and the countryside people and then the minister of health who saw the need for this particular thing. If there was anything that we did also was that we actually caused a total transformation. We also made them realize that look, here yeah, there are people who have tried to go there and do things, but they have done them substandard. And we show them that look, in, in future they have to demand high standards of quality of care and safe surgeries and training that they need. So it was quite, and for them to see us taking this care of these complex cases, which many people had left behind before, was very satisfying. We felt we achieved a lot. With that comfort which we are looking for, we have to found that we have found that comfort in the patient that we took care of. It was something that was very special to us. Something that I think sometimes you forget about it. I know people look at how the number and everything else, but you forget that one particular, that particular patient who was the confidence, who came in fear, and when he went out, he's holding your hand, he wants to go around with you, and he's greeting you. That was the most satisfying thing. The team was very happy about it. The government became very happy about it. And I'm sure that when we go back, it will be more better than it was before. Apart from the equipment needed in the theater and the wards, the hospital was powered by generators, which apparently needed fuel. The team had to cater for the fueling cost. We were then able to source uh, oxygen cylinders, uh, which were coming from uh, Somalia, I mean from Badishu, the capital city. We found out that um, it was quite challenging. I mean, one, we did not prepare for this. Each cylinder was costing us about $140 per cylinder. We had to buy 13 of those cylinders so we could be able to cover the days we were in that particular place. Then when we went to the hospital, we found out that because the thing about the temperatures we're talking about, this we were not used to it, and we can't operate when it's very hot. We found out that in the wards, I mean in the theaters, they were being run by fuel, by generators. The generators were consuming about 10 barrels per day. And uh, we were meant to pay about uh, almost close to about $2,000 to buy fuel for that purpose. Although there was a low level of mobilization and the difficulties in transport system, the turnout was great. I'm happy to report that we managed to take care of about 50 patients while we were in that place. These of them were doing about an average of about four or five patients a day. 
And uh, what was very interesting was that these patients were very complex. I know them had both the lip and the palate, bilateral. Very complex. Nobody has ever wanted to, to, to take care of them. The, the many of them came by stories. You know, you can't believe. Like two days before we left, there was a patient who came through the boat from Lamu, around Lamu area, traveling one and a half days to reach where we were. And then helping that patient and seeing the change over there. There were patients that came from the area, they were told as, as about control areas, where I'm told that they don't even be able to, to they, they don't camp, they, they don't allow people to go for treatment because so they don't believe in modern treatment. The beauty, when you see us holding those children, when you see us walking with them, some of them wanting to go with us to whatever we are going in, we became great friends. And I think it became, it became as a reality that when you are helping someone who really needs help, they really protect you. Do we go to these places or do we not go to these places? I think we are more convinced that look, if we didn't go to that place or we can't go back and help them, who will help them? Who will sacrifice to go and do the work? We are planning to go back February and March and we are asking for sacrifice to come forward and help us because we have to buy everything that's required. We have to make sure that we, we when the security and everything else is paid for, we have to make sure that we are not a better place that uh, people can give us. You saw the beds, you saw the ward that they get us. We have to change completely all the demand. And the carrying those uh, luggages is not an easy thing. We are urging you to be part of us as you go to other places and continue touching lives. It is not out of abundance that we will make the world a better place for everyone but out of unity and kindness. Remember, everyone's small effort when brought together will make a big and a positive impact towards the rightful cause. So those, some resources, frontiers who want to come and work with us, not only from Africa, from outside Africa, they're welcome to that. Those who want to channel their resources and be able to uh, help us get some of these costs that are quite very high, we dearly welcome you to come for And we thank those who have been stood with us a long time. God bless you and thank you so much. For more information, you can reach Help a Child Face tomorrow via the following plus 254-722-715-230 or plus 254- Seven one nine five 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 six six five, or through the email at meshakonguti at ymail dot com, or at info at helpachildfacetomorrow dot org.